guys uh, welcome back to another class just want to bring you back to the ceramics area so we can go over a few things and, and show some my my process my ways that I salvage clay and stuff so over here we have a bucket um, here, come on come on take a look take a look so over here we have a bucket full of soupy clay stuff and I have my plaster bats over here. I always run, usually I have only four plaster bats right now. I try and stack these much as, as I possibly can. Uh, but what we do is we liquefy the clay in one bucket, then we bring it over here to the plaster slab so we can dry this stuff out. And after we take all of that, then we move over to the pug mill. Uh, I've had to actually take this thing apart like five or six times. Because as you're working with a pug mill, you will have clay that dries up inside of this thing. You gotta take it out and, and all these little bolts I had a couple wrenches I'm just pulling out the bolts uh, you have to take the whole thing out I have to clean the whole thing out because depending on the type of clay that you're using you don't want to mix the bodies together uh, for me I have four ish clays I think there's five clays in the whole room but two of them I mix together all the time it's not a big deal I have my high fire clay back here I have a bucket specifically just for high fire clay here let me see back there it says high fire high fire clay and we want to keep those, those, that clay completely separate from all the others because all the other clay is a low fire clay. If I set, if I mix the two together, it becomes huge havoc and problems inside the kiln, and I don't want to deal with that. It's a massive headache. So right now in here, I've got two bodies that are uh, two low fire. I think it's an 04 to 06 body. Both are kind of on the white ish side when you fire it so they come out the same color so even if one's gray and one's uh, like a khaki color is the stuff that I showed you over there on the bats uh, you mix those two together there's nothing that's gonna happen it's all gonna be fine it's all gonna work together uh, there's no color change which for some some of the kids are like oh I wanted to see the two colors I'm like sorry man uh, but it still works out fine that's what really matters to me uh, the other two clays that I have that I keep separate that are kind of all on their own are is this reddish clay um, it's not a Lizella clay. That's like a it's like a reddish grog terracotta Mexican clay. Uh, and then in the bucket over there, I got some Lizella. Um, I like I'm I'm trying to get with all my other art teachers around the county and get us together to where if you have dried out clay, send it to me. We'll fix the clay up. We'll ship it back out to you so it works really well. Uh, and yesterday I had a big success in getting some of my clay to transfer over from. Uh, dried out form all the way through the, the process through the pug mill uh, ended up with a probably about 60 pounds ish uh, got over here came out in these nice cylinder came out in these nice cylinder cylinder blocks right here so I got a couple packs trying to pack them up I'm trying to run about 25 now we're trying to run about 25 pounds per bag uh, just gives that a nice finish quality to it however you know we're um, we're playing around with it so I've got the clay that over here that we're going to take off in just a few minutes and toss it in the mill so we can chop that up get some fresh clay out and I'll try and get some video of that for you guys to see and how I do it uh, FYI number one I am doing this in a very um, let's just say unsafe manner uh, reason being is because as much as I love this pug mill, it's a great pug mill. I've, I uh, I really preferred the one I had in college, where it was this massive vat, and you had the blades, kind of just you stuck your hand in the, the into the mixer, and prayed that your hand came out whole and you didn't slice your hand off. I do prefer that just because it was so much bigger. You could toss a whole lot more clay into it all at once. Um, but these designs now come with this like little lever thing, this that to stop for safety reasons, so you don't see the blades don't get cut up. Um, here's the thing, that's great to have this as a safety measure. But here's the problem: if you put bolts on these things that are not easy to take on and off, and that's in the design part, you need to fix that so that we have to take it apart to clean things out. It's a lot easier for us, and that was one of those big things. So. I have taken this part, like I said, uh, almost a dozen times, and in that time frame, all three of the three of the four bolts that have come to to lock this tank piece in have broken half on me, and now I have three bolts that I can't remove and I can't do anything with, and there's nothing I can do to keep this on. Luckily. Found a short around, so where I can leave this part open. I'm kind of the only one who's doing this now, just because it's a safety thing. And so when I turn it on, you can see the blades moving and chomping away. That's why I'm the one who's doing this. It's because, um, well, 
I feel better if I'm the one who's getting my hand chopped off than a student. That's kind of the big thing. Uh, the other thing is I'm kind of greedy because I like to do this. This is one, that's one of the things. Just taking a hunk of clay, tossing it into the uh, into the chopper, just to get things hacked up. Um, that's really cool. I don't know why, but it's really cool. All right, so you guys um, sit back, watch, and uh, get some footage of me tossing it in the clay. See you.